is biomass to hydrogen an emerging route? Have you got anything to offer there? Yeah, I mean, everyone will have their own views on this. I mean, we have seen some quite interesting um, projects where, for example, there may be constrained um, production of biogas, where people are saying, look, I mean, our alternative is to put it into a CHP. Uh, maybe some of it goes into electricity, but it's actually fairly inefficient. Uh, and some people are saying, well, we could put it into the gas grid, but we're trying to come off the gas grid here or the gas grid is constrained. So we're not really sure what that means as a long term option. Um, you know, there are, as a result, a number of people saying, well, what if you could reform that biogas into hydrogen, use it for transport? Um, there is quite a nice story here for local communities where if you are, say, uh, in North America, we've heard a few people talk about this recently. If you own your own wastewater treatment, you've got your own biogas instead of selling it as electricity, you use it to replace gasoline in your yeah, municipal vehicle fleet, for example, and you're producing your own fuel from treating wastewater from your own customers or your own constituents and residents. There's something quite interesting in that. Um, there's something also that I think appeals to a lot of people about um, that. So there are, I just don't think it's going to be necessarily a mass scale opportunity. I mean, biomass and bioenergy resources in general are quite rare. And there are a lot of very high value needs that we will have for them. Um, not only things like synthetic aviation fuel, which is an enormous market, um, but also the marine space. Um, you know, to give you an idea, and I'll stop with this one. Um, Alicia Eastman has a statistic that I love, which is that their project, their 25 gigawatt project in Australia, is the equivalent of the Three Gorges Dam. And you need 65 projects of that scale producing green ammonia. So that's 25 gigawatts of solar and wind and about 12 gigawatts of electrolysis. You need 65 of those to decarbonize global shipping today. So 65 renewable projects the size of the Three Gorges Dam to just decarbonize global shipping. So I think if we've got bioenergy resources, we need to use it on that before we start reforming it and using it in something like uh, transport when we actually we've got lots of solar and wind resources that's constrained. Um, and we've got other areas that we could be pursuing. Sure. Thanks, Chris. That's great. And um, I'll move that on to you as well, Cody. Do you have any kind of US perspective on biomass and, and other renewables? Yeah, well, clearly when we're trying to get to uh, a carbon neutral, there's a lot of different things we have to take in consideration. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of that in the U.S. right now and a matter of, but everybody's vying for it right now. So there's a big uh, push to see who can get it first, who can lock up the long term contracts. Uh, here in the U.S. And once again, I think, as Chris mentioned, we just have to uh, look at all the different solutions and look for the best uh, the best way to apply uh, technologies like that. 